Hey guys, um, now we are looking at um, the monetric juicer. Okay, so um, monetary transducer, um, for example, here we have thermocouple, it's a kind of voltage uh, generating uh, sensor, okay, uh, in which the fun of uh, EMF or uh, uh, voltage or current produced is specific proportion to the temperature change on the on the measurement uh, side, all right. And the EMF produced is found to you know, with the changes in temperature, and this, this is what what what, what called thermodynamic uh, principle. Okay, actually, what makes uh, the the effects come to life is basically uh, the basic um, concept of different material. They have uh, different thermal properties. They reacted differently to temperature. But when you see uh, here, uh, say electrons in hotter and have more thermal energy than electrons in the cooler end of specific material. Okay. So so when you have this kind of uh, gradient of thermal energy you will have atomic uh, level kind of transfer in terms of the movement and motion of electrons. So this motion and movement of electrons is basically uh, what we call as F current flow. Okay. Um, Summary here we have we have two different material, uh, for example nickel and copper. Put them together in two different temperature. So coming back again to the to the principle that per material, different thermal condition, uh, they reacted differently from uh, what they call that temperature. When when it's two material who have different thermal condition when you join them together basically you are creating some kind of imbalance some kind of uh, gradient potential gradient energy material A they have different energy at different temperature material B they have energy at different temperature put them together you are creating imbalance and gradient this will basically make them move towards you know equilibrium bridge equilibrium Right, so this this is more or less like uh, what you call as thermodynamic principle, and now we are looking at uh, Seebeck uh, effect. Also, basically uh, implement the same normal couple uh, effects. We have two material A and B uh, joining at two different temperature T1 and T2. Uh, this setup will cause EMF. Um, uh, once you establish in the circuit causing current to flow and uh, the EMF produced is proportional to the difference uh, in temperature between these two junctions. Okay. Dimension, uh, dimension up there you have T1 and T2 um, again going back to the principle of two material, two temperature. Okay, And then uh, um, see the formula there for the epsilon uh, solid state theory of, of the EMF, specifically uh, the charge of movement between uh, material A to material B uh, at two temperature T1 and T2 uh, over the time. Right? Um, so, this is more or less how the uh, setup looks like for the Seebeck effect. We have uh, two material, material A and material B, and you join them uh, in a junction, which you apply two different temperatures, for example, T1 is at 25 degrees Celsius, T2 is 100 degrees Celsius, by the setup you will induce EMF or you will induce current, this is what is, uh, we call a Seebeck effect. Uh, Other than Seebeck effect, you know, you have filter effect, uh, in which uh, the situation is in reverse uh, as compared to Seebeck uh, effect. For the Peltier effect, uh, sorry, for the Seebeck effect, you, you take two different materials, put them in 
put the junction in two different temperature, you are going to get voltage, you are going to get current, all of it. Alright, so in this case, um, you get current and voltage from the setup. Okay. As uh, for the Peltier effect, the thing works in reverse. Okay, you current, you give voltage, you will be observing a uh, thermal difference between these two materials. So it works uh, basically reverse as the Seebeck effect, right? Again, I, I, I repeat, for the Seebeck effect, you set up two, two different materials, you join them, apply two different temperature, you get voltage coming out. But for the Peltier effect, you give voltage to the setup, you will observe two different temperature at these two junctions. The, and the, the amount of temperature that you are observing is specifically in proportionate to the amount of current and voltage you are applying to the system. Okay. In this case, uh, you, you have the side that is hotter and you have one side that is cooler. Okay. So this is basically a uh, no couple. Okay. Also using the Seebeck and the Peltier effect. Okay. Again, two different material, two different temperature. Okay. And one temperature is clearly a uh, reference uh, temperature because uh, as a sensor, we are, we are measuring one uh, temperature. Okay. Uh, but according to the principle, you have to have temperature in order to system work. So one temperature will be kept at the room temperature and the other one is put in at the measurement point. So you have two temperature, two material, Voltage coming out, same setup. It's a Seebeck heat. Okay. Um, okay. So, so we are talking about different temperature and different material. Here in this table, you have uh, characteristics of uh, different material. You have type, J, K, R, S, C. Now it is color coded, and this other operating range. Okay, and that is the sensitivity of the material. So when you want to construct a sensor, these are the option that you have. Uh, you have to select the right material with the right temperature uh, working, of course, with the right sensitivity. So how to get how to get the reading from from this uh, particular sensor, All right? Because when you apply the sensor to the measurement condition, all you are getting is specific voltage. That, that comes out, and how are you going to convert this voltage into temperature? All right. So looking at this diagram, you have um, you have temperature and uh, thermocouple of response. They are kind of linear sensor, which have different profile according to the material that you are selecting. All right. If you select S type, have that kind of response. Okay, you have uh, a lot of changes in the temperature, but very little changes in the millivolts output. If you are to select J or K, you will have more or less equal changes in the temperature and the uh, thermocouple output, which is in millivolts. Right? So this is uh, some kind of mapping table in which uh, if you are using, uh, I would say, S type of uh, thermocouple, if you are looking from the graph at, at, at the graph in temperature of 1050 degrees Celsius, you are looking at 10 millivolts. All right. So here you have the graph. You can easily map them out. All right. But what happens if the temperature is not according? You cannot find the temperature graph. You have to go and look for the table. So there are different table for different uh, material for the thermocouple. Okay. Now we learn how to use the table to convert from the measurement that you have uh, from the couple to the temperature reading. Okay. Here we have, for example, uh, we want to measure uh, the voltage at 210 degrees Celsius uh, J type. Okay, you will basically get 11.4 millivolts. All right. Let's look at the table of J type thermocouple at 210 degrees Celsius. This is J type. Okay, so you have the most left, uh, most left column is temperature. The most upper column is also the temperature, and everything uh, else is basically voltage and uh, millivolts. All right. 
So um, from this table, you know, look at the left side, the most left column you are, you are having negative 150 degrees Celsius down to maximum 700 degrees Celsius. This is your temperature. So you have minus 150, you have uh, minus 100. So from minus 150 going down to minus 100, you will have the smaller unit in which you have to refer to the to the uppermost uh, uh, row 0 to 45. For example, if I am um, looking at uh, the temperature a measurement of negative 150 degree, I will have negative 6.5 millivolts. But if I'm now looking at 100 and 100 and um, 30, for example, so I have to start from the left side, starting from minus uh, 100, I have to go down. Uh, uh, I have to I, I have to find an, another 30 degree. So 100 uh, minus 100, you will have the, the row of minus 4.65. You will have to go down further to the right, look at the column of 30 degrees Celsius. So minus 100 plus 30, I will have my final measurement is minus 5.8 uh, 80 uh, millivolts. That, that this is how you convert things. Okay, so you can basically convert from temperature to uh, Voltage. Also, you can do you can you can you can convert from voltage that you are you, know, you are getting back to the temperature that you are measuring. So this thing works uh, back and forth basically. So if you go up again to look at uh, voltage 210 degrees Celsius 210. So uh, to the left most column minus 150. Go down to 200. After 200 is you have to 250. So Cannot go. You, you, you cannot take the 250. You take uh, the 200. Uh, start from 0 to 100. 0 is 10 to 78. All right. Then, because you need 210, 200. You have to go. Uh, you have to move along to the right. 200 plus 10 degree up there, and you are ending up to 11.34. All right. That's the correct measurement. So you will have. Let's now look at uh, the second one, T. Okay, we look for the temperature at 32.99 millivolts. All right, this is K type. So when you see the K type, you have to go and look for the table um, for the K type thermocouple. Now, uh, the thing worked in reverse. Previously, we read uh, we read the voltage from the given temperature. Now we read the temperature. From the voltage, so our voltage uh, information that we have is 22.99. Let's go to the K. Look for 22.22.99. This is K. You have to look for 22.99 in the table somewhere. We have 21, 26, 23, 22.99. Yeah, I found it here. I look at the leftmost. I have 550 temperature and I from that 22.99 I go up I have five so my temperature here would be 555 okay we go up again let's check yeah we have 555 degrees Celsius okay, you can check your understandings all right just in case uh, you cannot find your voltage value in the table you have to use the formula down there it's uh, basically compensation of between the upper upper limit of temperature and upper limit and lower limit of the temperature and voltage, all right? If you want to measure some uh, temperature in between uh, any values in the table, you have to go, you have to look at the information of lower temperature and upper temperature range, as well as the lower and upper voltage range. Just put it in the formula, you will have the value. Okay, so this works with any kind of thermocouple, you know, you have JK, any other type, and the way for you to read is, uh, as I explained just now, you can find temperature from the given voltage, you can find voltage from the given temperature, okay. So this is the information of uh, advantages and advantages of the sensor. One of the problem is nonlinearity, which you can correct that using a single conditional circuit. 
and the good thing about Pro Couple is, is it is very rugged, uh, not too expensive. For uh, they can they can withstand and they can make it to extremely high temperature, and it's wide, wide range. All right. So um, can go through the uh, example here. You have solution. Okay. So you can try your understanding uh, using this. Uh, this information. First, you have to go to the correct table according to the material, according to the type, G, K, you know, and then uh, just look at the information in the table. Okay. If you have more example. Uh, you can you can try yourself basically. Okay. Of course, the Mokapo itself is a sensor. You can read the information here. Um, of course, you have thermocouple, you have the semi conditioning part. Okay. Okay, so that's the smallest the end of this uh, feature for thermocouple.